The McElroy brothers are not experts. And their advice should never be followed. Well, Travis insists he's a sexpert. My voice has never broken on that part before. Sexpert. But if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I only mention so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. My brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middleest brother, Mr. Seattle, Travis McElroy. And I am sweet baby brother, 30 under 30, media luminary, Navy lieutenant. I forgot my rank, Griffin McElroy. I got to keep. We haven't done a show in a seaside town in a while. I gotta keep my periphery sorta of in check to just make uh, sure. That always on call. I love it out west. Fella can breathe out of here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Room to grow, mine some gold. <laughs> um, Ever expanding. This is room like, to settle here in Seattle. Okay. This is there this is a sports themed theater. I would a sports themed theater. <laughs> There's a lot of sport theme in this theater. Uh, I think it's I'm the feeling cl- a lot of sports theme in this theater tonight. I think it's the closest dad has gotten to being like really proud. Not like yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like because we had a jersey with our name on it, and that had to be the odds against that are just <laughs> astounding. <laughs> And we didn't pay for it or anything. No, they just no, they did, did it. it. It was um, cool. I was ex- I had I was explaining to them backstage the concept of the of the the twelfth man, uh, being that your football theater <laughs> was designed in such a sonically unpleasing way that it is meant to be very frightening to the other football teams that come to visit you, which seems, if I'm being honest with you, Seattle, a little rude. They're your guests. Yeah. Football second. They're hospitality first. That is the Seattle motto. Here's what I love. Football second. Hospitality first. What that implies, Griffin, is that the home team... Yeah, loves it. ...has just been so bathed in this unpleasant sound that when they go to other stadiums, they're like, it's really it's quiet. So quiet. So like, they're setting themselves up like, now I can just hear my own thoughts. <laughs> I'm, every time I get hit, I hear the bones crunching. <laughs> I hate this. Could you guys yell a lot? <laughs> <laughs> it is so nice here though, weather-wise. I realize today, it doesn't get nice like this ever on the East Coast. It's a different kind of nice where you must be very hard on you people coming to the East Coast with your delicate constitutions. <laughs> You've you... been babied by this beautiful air. It's so clean. If I walk, I went on a walk today. What? Whoa. And when I got to a point where there were stairs, I did not abandon the walk. That's how nice the weather was. I just did it. I saw, uh, <laughs> but halfway up, I saw a, a scooter just like cast aside on the ground. So I was like, no, 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Now all you need to do is figure out your clocks because they're three hours slow. It sucks so bad. If you can fix that, you guys would have it all over the East Coast. You know, I went today, uh, General Poipus. Y'all yeah. been there? 
I think it's I think it's better than Top Pot. I don't want to start anything, but that's where I'm at as a Why donut expert. Why rile them up this way, Justin? It's what? so unnecessary. I like to get a little juice going in the crowd, a little bit of hostility. You want the you want the fourth brother on stage tonight. Yeah, we have we have constructed this place so that your sound is echoed back at us. That you know, in a, in a really unpleasant way. Yeah, right, so that our awesome. so that our enemies will be scared of you, our podcast yeah. enemies. And the other side of the theater, Smartless is putting on a show. Yeah. We're amp versus amping <laughs> Smartless. And we need you all to scare the shit out of them, but not us. So everyone, turn around and face the back wall. <laughs> no, don't. Um, this is an advice show. Yeah. And the way it works. If, if it's one thing, it's that. Have you? Has anyone in the crowd never listened to my brother, my brother and me before? Let me hear you. All right. Okay. Get out. No, stop. No, stop. We really appreciate you being here. This is a, a normal advice show, and people will ask. A... You're messing it up for me in front of them. This is my chance hey, to start yeah, over. Hey, plug, plug your ears for 30 okay, seconds. No, this is a normal, they don't know. They this don't is know. a normal advice show where we take your questions and we turn them alchemy like into wisdom. And we have, after uh, many long years, reemerged here, much like the, our friends at Chilean Miners here yeah. in Seattle. We're so happy to be here with you. You have sent us your queries, and we're duty bound to answer them. I'm a cold water scuba diver. Good choice, considering. And I've been trying to get my... That's not up to you, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, you don't go to the water source and be like, hey, can you warm Excuse this me. up, God? <laughs> um, and I'm trying to get my friend into it, too. Only now I'm kind of scared of diving because I went diving for crab recently and got hit in the chest by a harbor seal that wasn't looking where it was going. <laughs> we'll circle back to that. How do I convince my friend to get into this activity with limited air, limited visibility, exposure to dangerous animals, and intense natural conditions that I am now scared of? Yeah. Yeah, that's from Not So Safe and Puget Sound in Seattle. Was there a moment where the harvest seal was like looking at your wetsuit and was like, I think that'll buff out. We don't need to exchange <laughs> insurance or anything. Look, one of my whiskers is bent, and I'm not making a big fucking a big deal, deal about out it. Of it. And I know what you're thinking. No, I haven't been drinking. I just wasn't can looking you, where I was going. Can you? I have to imagine for you, this was the best day of your life. I cannot imagine going from the mental state of I'm scuba diving, so I'm already very scared, uh, and then a big sort of piece of the marine ecosystem has smashed into my human body. My brain is immediately like... Let's go ahead and start distributing the spirit molecule because you're a dead man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all that happened. Happen. 13 Griffin is a couple ounces lighter. Yeah. yeah. 13 of the 23 grams already <laughs> yeah, been just chucked kick off. Those right, right into high gear. You go from, I am definitely dead to, oh, it's okay, little friend. <laughs> it's okay. You made an accident, little whiskered friend. Go on your beautiful, it's, merry way. It's like that scene in Fight Club and like the seal walked away. It was like, the next day is going to be the best day of that diver's life. I, yeah. Can we get one thing straight though, interloper? You, this seal has no obligation to you. No, you are you are a trespasser. It didn't it didn't veer into your lane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You weren't in line at Quiznos, and then they just <laughs> head. Oh God, you. I'm so sorry, man. So sorry about that. You need like a hundred accessories to be able to be alive there for a minute. Like yeah, it's not your it's not your place. Do harbor seals eat crabs? Yeah, okay, then maybe do some soul searching about. And this listen. Would be like you're in line at Quiznos. You have checked out at Quiznos and are holding your sandwich. They don't come up and snatch the sandwich out of your hand. That's and if they did, too. you'd love it. You would not. <laughs> you put that on TikTok and you're famous now. And also, I want to say this listen. This is the worst Quiznos in my neighborhood. Every time I order, the seals play with them in a very dirty way and then eat the sandwiches. I've never received a sandwich from this Quiznos. Three out of five stars. Yeah. Uh, also, sorry, I, I know it sounds. this is going to sound like I'm dunking on you, but... It's I love it. My pulse is a regular, uh, I, regular tempo right now. Thanks, I would Jeff. never scuba dive because I am uh, what one might call a coward. Yeah. And uh, I love that it took being head-butted in the sternum by a harbor seal for you to be like, maybe this isn't safe. <laughs> maybe... Maybe going into a substance that my body can't process through my mouth and lungs isn't 
safe. <laughs> I listen. Okay, can we be can we be real for a second? For just a millisecond. If you hear somebody beefs it scuba diving around from an animal, there is a part of you that's like, well, you know, yeah, like. Well, well yeah, I, I understand that does happen, doesn't it? You know, like yeah. people do oof it in those circumstances. Um, yeah, I you, get that. That's not a thing you would respond to, like with "What are the odds? Well, how could it be?" You know the odds, like yeah. one out of two. Yeah, like know? really pretty good. You also put on a lot of shit that makes you look delicious to certain marine life. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna throw stones. I but. feel like the friend is maybe you. <laughs> are you the friend who's like maybe this isn't for me anymore? I love the idea, though, of, like, giving scuba diving lessons, but you don't go in the water. <laughs> Where you're like, put this on, great. You're breathing, great. Go down for a while. But, and this is so important, come up at the end. Come up super. <laughs> I'll be waiting here with apple slices. When you are attacked by the harbor seals, you are going to want to come up very fast. You cannot do that. I no, regret no, no. to inform you. I think you. I think you also stand on the pier with a loaded rifle, ready for any harbor seal. <laughs> I got you. Make and sure when you come back, you do not behave like a normal harbor <laughs> seal might. <laughs> You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, don't mimic their behaviors, please. Howdy, brothers. I'm an amateur clown. I enjoy doing balloon animals and pratfalls, and I ha even have an outfit and a little routine. The issue I'm having is with finding appropriate places to practice these skills, particularly the balloon animals. I used to live with my three toddler siblings, and they loved it, but now I'm no longer regularly around kids, and the person I live with hates clowns. <laughs> oh, man. Is there any way to maintain this hobby without terrorizing the people around me? That's from Not Scary, I swear, in Seattle. That's what all non-scary people say. Is, are you here? Right. You know, ever since I moved in with Stephen King, I just can't do my clowning anymore. <laughs> that guy hates me. Um, sorry, Trav, I got to go into the joke you just made. Um, you're suggesting that Stephen King wove such a rich tapestry of fear with it that he himself gets scared of the shit he wrote about in it so bad. No, sorry, Griffin. Uh, let me explain. Stephen King. Stephen King, when he writes his scary stories, just goes, fuck, that's scary. I can't even with clowns no more. No, no. Stephen King yeah. made the choice to yeah. ruin an entire career yeah. by, like, what is it going to be? Yeah, yeah. Fuck clowns. Yeah, yeah. But also then, like, his publicist is like, yeah, and so we got you this nice hotel. He's like, I can't. Too fucking scary, man. Are you out of your mind? Woo! I mean, he's a very good writer. Yeah, sure. He wrote himself into loving the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I, Wow. For me, I would not want, I would not want, stick with me here, a roommate who clowned at home where I also lived. Yes. Mm. But I also wouldn't want a roommate who did any kind of performance art in the yes. room where I also lived. Like, if my roommate was a musician that performed at restaurants table to table, yeah. that's fine. I'm eating some mac and cheese. Yeah. And they come over and play some Wonderwall for me. Right. I don't like that. I, I need to be prepped to consume art yes. in a live environment. It should art should never be foisted on you. You should always knowingly go into an artistic experience. You That's why we hate flash mobs. That's hey, true. I think that I agree with you about I do not want my roommate to clown like at, at the house where I live. But the flip side, to build on that, I don't actually want them to hide it really well either, because that's worse. Like, I don't want to see a nose on the counter, and they're like, it's nothing, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's, a, that's just a plum. Oh, 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 what a good plum. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. Honk, honk. No, it's Stop chewing. <laughs> I would it's know. Not, it's not. I'd fucking for sure know. I don't think anyone could live in the same house as me and secretly clown, and I wouldn't eventually get wise. You think big shoes? I would hear them clomping around. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you don't wear them indoors, though. It's bad for the. the <laughs> I don't know anything about clown stuff. Um, the Wait, hold on. The you don't know anything about clown stuff. The problem anything. The problem you're having is being an amateur clown. You gotta start charging. That's way less weird. Yeah. If you say to people for twenty dollars, I'll be the clown there. You know, the problem is you're in a different era. There used to be a time in this country where you couldn't have a Here we car, go. car dealership open unless there was a clown there. 
You know, you couldn't open up a movie house without uh, bringing in a clown. Otherwise, yeah. people think you didn't, you know, really lay out for this event. Sure. Uh, the demand, I'm sorry, is just not there right now. Ooh. And you can buy our Make America Silly Again hats. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Listen, hey, yeah? can you shift it just a little bit? And I don't know if this is part of the sort of cultural landscape here in Seattle. But um, and become a rodeo clown Ooh. because now all of a sudden, you're a hero. when you're a rodeo clown, if the roommate can't be like, stop clowning, and you'd be like, oh, so you want rodeo guys to die? <laughs> <laughs> and then That's your roommate's like, you don't have to rodeo clown in here. There's no bulls here. I've never been attacked by a bull. And you're like, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. That's, all I'm That's why I keep the bulls away. A bull tried to get in here last week. Yeah. I clowned so scary, they ran away. Here's, here's a balloon animal. That's not part of my rodeo clown thing. It's something I do to relieve stress because being a rodeo clown is terrifying. Can we talk about rodeo clowns for yes, a minute? Please. Okay. Yeah. It kind of feels like maybe if we put in a little bit more mental imagination elbow grease into the question of how can we make a bull so scared it won't kill a person, we could come up with a better one than clowns. This is... This is what I love about the rodeo clown scenario. If, they, if we could get someone in like a mech suit with like bazookas, like choo, choo, choo. if we could dress someone up like, I don't know, like a lion or an elephant. Or a they, bigger bull. A bigger bull. No way. I'm out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It seems like we did, hey, look at that guy. It seems like we a clown scared a bull once and every person alive was like, hey, that's bud. it. Hey, hey bud. If, wait, Travis and I have to step in now. The clowns don't scare the bulls. The clowns distract the bulls. They chase the clowns. The, they, the clowns don't come out like, blah, 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 and the bulls and are the bulls like, oh, shit. Fuck, I just finished reading Griffin, it. Griffin, <laughs> stop for a second and think about what you're suggesting. No, you're right. No, don't talk. No, think okay. about it. The bulls are running at him. And the clown, what the clown does is they sprint <laughs> at the bull, hoping okay. that the bull is going to be like, oh, fuck. fuck. Let me then... Uh, let me amend. Hey, the bull just keeps killing them. I thought it was scary as <laughs> I shit. I thought it would be, I'm scared of them. Why aren't the bulls? Let me amend. I don't know, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> let me amend it. I would love to amend yeah. my earlier statements. Yeah. That of the human sort of caricatures that one could embody that would make a bull want to kill it so bad, I would actually say we got it in one with clowns. <laughs> okay. But that's not a representation of my own thoughts. I think clowning is beautiful. If I was a bull and I saw a clown, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed off. This is what I love, though. The invention of rodeo clowns must have gone like this. Yeah, man, uh, we, these guys get on top of this big animal. Big animal hates it, knocks them off, and then tries to kill them. We should stop doing it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hold on, wait, wait, Let's wait. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. What if instead we, found um, not, we get a third, <laughs> a third party involved? Go on. <laughs> what what is the what is the what are we looking for in this third party? Killability. <laughs> just <laughs> that we need the bull to look at the cow person that was just on top of him and go, I wanna kill that one. Wait, Wait sure? what the fuck is What's this? That? Get out of here. Are you sure we shouldn't try to scare the bull? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Think about Where it. Where are we gonna find the clown at this time of day? <laughs> hey everybody. Hey. We're gonna go uh, live from New York. It's with special guests. We have pulled from a variety of variety shows. There yes. it is. Some musical guest introductions. Go to the first one, Paul. Please. This is Jude Law introing Pearl Jam. That's actually uh, a palindrome. <laughs> When, That's so stupid. When are we going to give Jude Law his own courtroom TV show? That's Jude Law. <laughs> I want it so bad. Now. Okay. So and wait, Pearl Jam, just their own cooking show. Explain the game. Okay, yeah. so here's how it works. I need Justin and Griffin with this information to tell me the vibe, the attitude, the delivery of Jude Law introducing Pearl Jam, the musical guest. Fast. It's coming at you fast and hot. I think he doesn't wait for the audience to stop clapping as they come back from commercial break, and he just rips it into, uh, ladies and gentlemen, pro jam! Like, okay, that's hot. good. Ladies, here, here, I think it's a little more solemn, because I'm trying to think of the era this would be. I think it might be that one really sad one they did. Well, you remember that one? Uh, so I think it's like... That one sad Pearl Jam song? I think it's like, not their more upbeat numbers. La ladies and gentlemen, 
Pearl Jam. Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, roll, roll it. Justin nailed it. Justin got it in one. That's really good. That's a stunner. That's a stunner. How has Jude Law never played Sting in anything? It sucks so bad. It's exactly Sting. Okay, next, next video. We've got Woody Harrelson introing David Byrne. Oh, fuck. Hey, Travis, it's tour manager Paul. I think it's a very important to note, because this may affect their answer, that this is young Woody Harrelson. Yes, important. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for doing the work that our brother refuses to do. Is Okay, I'm going to take a huge shot in the dark here because this happens sometimes. I think Mr. Harrelson's in a costume as he does this. Okay. okay. We see this sometimes on this segment. Usually in the 70s and 80s. Usually in the 70s and 80s when they let you have fun on this show. Am I right, folks? Uh, full Back cost- before SNL went woke. Whoa. <laughs> Full costume, full mullet, apparently. Uh, and, you know, he's hot. He's probably hot, like a little high. All right, everybody. David Byrne. Wow. And all right, everybody. Specific phrasing. Roll the tape. Ladies and gentlemen, David Byrne. Wow. <laughs> Woody Harrelson does not give two shits that David Byrne is there. What a surprise. I want to take Woody and be like, listen, man. I actually think there's a lot to this dude that you personally would vibe with you in a big really way. You would really like. It feels like somebody bullied him into doing Like, I don't want to introduce him. You have to, Woody. They, you have to or we're not going to pay just you. just drags him out by the earlobe. Ah, I don't want to introduce David Byrne. Byrne. Next, combo. Uh-oh. Charlize Theron. Yeah. Introducing the Black Keys. Loud. Screaming, Sh- screaming loud, so loud. Ladies and gentlemen, the Black Keys! Like it's quiet and then it's loud. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, roll it. <laughs> oh, no! No idea. Charlize will get it in post. No. Don't worry. <laughs> this is not the first time we've seen Charlize intro someone. For some reason, in one, she's sitting on a set at a desk, and it's almost the same thing, where it seems that halfway through it, she's forgotten who the performer is. The last word. I think, here's my theory. Okay. She started in her brain to say Black Eyed Peas. Both times. That she was like, the Black Keys. That would explain why she's laughing at the beginning, because she's like, I can't fucking believe I'm about to watch the Black Eyed Peas. (laughs) But then she remembers... After saying the word black, uh uh-oh, it's keys. (laughs) I messed up. Bummer, summer. Okay, one last one. Okay. Robert De Niro. Oh, man. Introducing Diddy Dirty Money at VJ Swiss Beats. I have to, Travis, I feel like it's only fair if you give us, does he actually say the words featuring Swiss Beats? Indeed he does. (laughs) That's good for me, man. That's good. Oh, it is the second second song. song. Thank you, Paul. Once again, this is a once again. Okay, can I hit you with this? Ladies and gentlemen, Diddy Dirty Money featuring Swiss B. Okay. <laughs> Do it. Diddy Dirty Money featuring Swiss Beats. That was really good. Roll the tape. Swiss Beats. <laughs> hey, don't say it like that, Robert. Look at his face at the end. Nah. Oh, well. I love Diddy Dirty Money, but I could do without the Swiss, the Swiss beats. Take or leave Swiss beats. <laughs> I'm never going to win another Oscar. Listen, <laughs> Diddy Dirty Money Swiss beats is holding you back. <laughs> You're fine on your own. Stand on the convictions of yourself, Diddy Dirty Money. Uh, thank you, Travis. Thank You're you, welcome. Travis. I am 31 and am part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. I recently took my 14-year-old little brother roller skating and thought I would be fine because I used to be good at roller skating when I was also 14. We all did. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out my body's gotten worse at it. A lot of things since then. I (laughs) fell on my ass 
I hope you didn't use language like that because you're in front of a bunch of children. Yeah, a 14 year olds never heard ass before, yeah. Justin. Now my little brother wants to go roller skating again next weekend. How do I avoid embarrassing myself again and making up for all the coolness points I lost last time? That's from Dan. Hey, Dan, you're not going to make up those coolness points. You're 31, and yeah. this kid is 14. Yeah, it's over. They didn't think you were cool before you're you fell already down. You're operating at such a tremendous deficit. Um, yeah, we learned this, I would say, the hard way when we shot the Mabim Bam TV show. We, we really, we really, there was a lot of, um, a, a, a lot of sort of like shooting locations on that one that we were really sort of flying by the seat of our pants. So we would roll up to a venue and then like find out what it is we were doing and then do it. Uh, and that was when we were like, okay, this is easy. We'll just go to Rollerama and we'll do some roller skating with our friends. Not thinking about the logical question of, hey, when was the last time you roller yep. skated? <laughs> that's Dan, that's the problem. It's not that your body has gotten bad at things in 31 years. It has. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Virtually everything. My body's gotten bad at sleeping in 39 years. Yeah. It's bad. But it's also that my guess is you have not roller skated since you were like 14. Yeah. Right? You've spent 17 years not roller skating yeah. and thought... I'll be able to just do it again. Yeah, I'll just yeah. hop right back on it. That's why in the TV show, I'm always on a little sit and spin. I don't put the skates on my feet. I want to live. That's I think true. we were barefoot for a lot of those shots. Hey, can I tell you the problem? And this is advice I wish I'd given myself. If I could go back in time, I could tell myself one thing. You know what I'd tell myself? What's that? I find myself at eight years old, I'd say, little Justin. I'd say, yes, big Justin. I'd say, fall every day. Okay. The thing is, when you're a kid, you fall... Eight, nine, ten times a day. No big deal. Are you still talking to little Justin? No, this is just to the audience. Oh, fuck the off. Show. Okay. <laughs> you fall eight, nine, ten times a day. No big deal. As you get older, you keep falling, but it's less. And then eventually, you don't have a lot of reasons why you would fall, right? Yeah. yeah. The reasons that you would come up with the fall kind of go by the wayside. Yeah. Eventually, you blink. It's been two or three years since you really had a good, solid fall. A good fall. tumble, yeah. And there's no fucking way of telling how that's going to shake out. That, that said... If you had fallen yesterday and the day before that, just giving yourself a real good fall every day, yeah. it's never going to catch you by surprise. No. So out in the lobby, make sure you get your Live Laugh Fall shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your fall like no one's watching and shirts. And make sure before you have your fall, your good, clear way of the legal premises of this theater yes. we're operating um, in this evening. S uh, several months ago, I took a, myself a little tumble while I was dropping Henry off at school, which sucks because there were a lot of people there who saw me fall yeah. that I would rather they didn't, but it was rainy, and I, I was... I bet the fall, right? You just fell down, but an even farther fall in your son's estimation. Probably, probably. I was very brave about it, but yeah. I did... As I was falling, I had... I ran the mental calculus on my last big fall, yeah. and it was a long time ago. For and sure. so as I was falling, I was like, I don't know what the fuck is about to happen. <laughs> like, I might die. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But what if you had fallen the day before that? And the day before that. And the day before that. Private? I would love to have fallen privately before I fell. <laughs> a, a couple <laughs> practice falls. Yeah. A man helped me up who was also dropping off his kids, and my first instinct was to slap his hand away <laughs> and say, my son is watching. Let me stand up on my own. That's where you spin around and sleep his leg. Yeah. And you're like, it was all for That's this. That's it. If I see someone fall down in front of their kid, you know what I'm going to do? Fall down. <laughs> so that their kid is like, oh, so it's cool to fall down. Or like there's some kind of curse happening here. I fell it's down. It's knocking adults down left and right. I stopped myself with my hands mm. and wrists and I guess elbows and I guess shoulders. All the hospital points. All of them. And I scraped my hands up pretty bad. Um, and then afterwards, I sort of post-gamed it in the car as I was holding napkins in my hands to staunch my, my amazing blood from coming out of my body. Uh, and I just couldn't stop thinking, like, there was probably a better way to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but once again, Justin's practice falls come into play here. Because when you're falling, if you have the wherewithal, you're like, wait, hold on. Let yeah. me twist Can my I, body around no, like a kid. But if cat. I fell I every day, make... I could execute a fucking Gene Wilder yes. Wonka no, tumble. No, 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 no. You guys, are, you guys are misunderstanding fall every day. 
I think you are thinking of it more like a like a keto roll, sort of like teach yourself to do safe pratfalls every day. Yeah. I'm saying you really got to put the fucking mustard into it. Okay. Where you're not going to know where they're all going to end up. You need to develop something beyond muscular sense about it. You need to just be okay with falling however. You're talking about a certain a certain bone ruggedness. <laughs> yeah. A flexibility that only comes with the, the hard falls, you okay. know? But also a bit of mental ruggedness to just let yourself go just loose. Let yourself fall. No tensing up, no catching. Don't catch just absolutely the... Billy No Bones as you go down. It's Whoa! kind of you, like you turn into like someone from a Bethesda game that like just stretches way right, out. Right. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, for sure. Man, I don't want to fall down ever, ever again. Hey, one of the best parts, Dan, of being over 30 is that when someone's like, are you going to roller skate too? You can go, no. <laughs> Look at my human body. It's done getting better. Now I'm just trying to slow down how worse it gets Because I don't know each to, day. I don't know how to break this to you. But if you are an older adult and someone's like, do you want to roller skate? And you're like, no, I'm going to rollerblade and I'm going to do tricks while I do it. That's too good. Like, that's too far yeah. in the good direction. Yeah. So you can just let the 14-year-old younger brother roller skate. Yeah. And then you, like, pay for the arcade games or whatever. And you nailed it. You, you did, did a, a great, great job. job. If God wanted the ground to be wheels. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Think about it. Think about that. I will also say this. If I know anything about 14-year-olds, the fact that you fell down and busted your ass is why he was oh. like, can we do this can again? Can we please, next please, Samari? Please. I wasn't filming. You got it one more time, okay? You made this like, whoa. <laughs> you went so I, I will say, you could go home and practice all night long, show up the next day, not fall. You've broken the child's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go on, Griffin. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It's time. I have another segment that we will probably use to finish off the first act here of our podcast before we take a brief intermission. This one is also quite visual. It also carries, I would say, a tremendous amount of risk for yours truly. This, this, game, this game is called Minion Quotes. In this game, we will show you sort of terrible Facebook memes that boomers would post on their walls uh, with a cartoon character on it. I have removed the cartoon character. You will read the quote of this meme that boomers would post on Facebook and try to guess who the cartoon character is featured. If my brothers can get it correct, I will post it context-free on my own personal Facebook wall. Which has become, thanks to the fact that I have become the steward of this segment, a blighted hellscape. A lot of confusing inbox messages for a group. lot, a lot of sort of interactions with people from my past whom I never thought I'd hear from again. Can we see the first of the censored images, please, Paul? When people rob banks, they go to jail. When banks rob people, they get bonuses. Now, let me say this I have ordered these in order of how much I would care about posting them context-free to my Facebook wall. This one would be, frankly, kind of on-brand and cool for me, I think. Uh, here, here's what I would like to say. Yeah, go ahead. The first half makes yeah. complete sense. Yeah. I've never like been watching the news or read the newspaper where it's like, oh, this bank's getting another bonus again. Yeah, I mean... Banks don't get bonuses. Well, they get bailouts a lot of the sure, time. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Like a bonus. Yeah. But no one's ever been like, hey, bank, good, good job. Good job robbing people. Scrooge McDuck. Okay, that's interesting. But you've done this segment before to know that that is much too relevant to the copy. It's not my guess. I'm my real guess is... Lightning McQueen. Ooh, Ooh, that's cool. I love that. That would be good. Travis, you should make these. <laughs> that would be good as fuck, man. But that's not the answer. Justin, I'll let you do another one. Really? Because you forgot yourself. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Elmer Fudd. No. This one is the Cat Garfield. <laughs> oh, man. It I, seems hate, like maybe... I hate Mondays and capitalism. But, or it seems like this little... Uh, the parallel he is drawing here, he actually likes it. 
He likes that when banks <laughs> rob people, they get bonuses. And hey, it's hey, awesome. The system's Good. working as intended. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing. Uh, there's two more opportunities to further ruin my social media presence with the people we used to go to church with. If you fart while wearing a thong, does it whistle? Okay. Not in a million, billion, trillion years will you get this answer. <laughs> Okay. Well, do you want to, if you're so certain of that, do you want to give us a hint? Any, any little breadcrumb? Uh, it's a cartoon character. Come on. Come on. It's, a bit, it's not funny. Unless it's a cartoon character mostly known from a film. And oh. also, I'm realizing the silhouette I've carved out here does look like a wiener. That was not intentional. <laughs> but it is. Is it, is it Poppy? Poppy? From the Trolls movie. No. All right. Okay. That hold was on. so fucked up that you thought that, Justin. <laughs> the hair. I'm going I, the actually. This is crazy. I didn't know that I had such strong feelings about this. Travis is so good at making these, and you're bad at making these. That's I, pervert. The what you just said is pervert. It's just the shape looks like Poppy's hair. I is know it, it doesn't. Okay. The costume, the super suit designer from The Incredibles, who I believe is named Edna. Edna, Edna Mode. Mode. Um, that's a great guess, but it isn't. This one is going to be Timon. <laughs> wow. That was my next guess. Yeah. That was next in the order of I don't want it to be on my wall. The third one, I think, would do... Some considerable damage. <laughs> Sex is now classified as a misdemeanor. The more you miss, demeanor you get. Okay. The okay. more you miss, demeanor you get. There's so much about this that is absolutely puzzling. I've missed sex. As a result. Okay. I don't like the amount of <laughs> strategizing that is happening on the stage right now. I will say this too. Sometimes I'm rooting for them to get it in this bit because it's funny when they do get it. And it's a fun way to walk off stage is with the energy, the high of them getting one of these right. That's not the case this time. I would really rather not post this one on my Facebook. Wall. Hey, Griffin. Yeah? I, I don't want this to count as my guess so much as it's obligatory. Okay. No, it, well, that's not no, anything. No, you can't, can't do that, Trav. Just Ugh. say. Is it a minion? No, it is not a minion. Fuck! It's all up to you, Justin. Can you give me anything? Can I give you anything? It's not a minion. I will give you this, and this is incredibly generous. It is a featured player of the Minion Quotes segment. Don't, at, don't, you, don't you say a fucking word! You're on my team right now. No, it's Taz. It's got to be Taz. Yeah. Go for it. Is it Taz? No, it's not Taz. Tweety Bird. God. Is it Tweety Bird? Yes! No, he said yes, Taz. Yes, I got it! I you, got it! No, I, got it. I said Tweety Bird. I said no, Tweety it was, Bird. It counts. It counts. Tweety Bird. It counts. It counts. Tweety Bird. I said it before you revealed it, Sweetie Bird, I win. You gotta do it. So listen to how many posters there are. Come on, fourth brother. Fourth brother. Come on, fourth brother. We can do this together. The top post in my news feed is from our Nani. All right, it's up. Thanks, everybody. We'll be right back. back. It's better. It's better with you. Well, hello there. I hope you're enjoying this live read ad from, it's not, we're in Philadelphia. Anyways, it We're in Philadelphia matter. doing a live ad, and we've asked the audience to be extremely quiet. Shh. They will not be laughing at any of our jokes while we do this. But you know what's not funny? Socks. See? No laugh. <laughs> it's exactly... Oh, Justin laughed. Okay, Justin great. is also but here. But we want to tell you about Bombas because Bombas is your one-stop shop for shirts, socks, underpants, and love. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, because socks, T-shirts, and underwear are the three most requested items at homeless shelters. When you buy yours from Bombas, you're going to give one to someone who needs it. You're not going to. That but, would be wild. That would be a wild business if, if you, they if made that was you on your to-do do list. After yeah, you no, bought. Bombas is going to take care of the altruism and yeah. the comfort for you. And you can get those special fall collection socks, Ooh. underpants, and tees, including uh, merino wool. Oh, oh God. That's so blush. It feels like little pillows on your feet. So, maybe you're looking for an early holiday gift. Bombas gift boxes are filled with cozy goodies. And the best part is they come in a beautifully designed box that you don't even have to wrap. But you oh. still can... You if, want. like that's your thing. I'm wearing Bombas underpants right now. Gross. And I'm not afraid to tell you that because I'm, I'm not a private man. I don't, I want so much of my information is out on the internet right now, and I'm happy to share that with you. Yeah, cool. So go to bombas.com slash my brother and use code my brother, all one word, for 20% off your first purchase. That's B O M B A S dot com slash my brother and use code my brother at checkout. Bombas. Uh, wear them, wear the hell out of them. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Zoc Doc that's, is Zoc Doc. Uh, find the hell out of them. Zoc Doc, oh, I like find that. the hell out of these doctors. These doctors, they're hiding, folks. It's an <laughs> epidemic. Our nation's healthcare workers are hiding. They yeah, have gone they, to they, ground. Well, They've everybody hit, ground. They leaned out their windows and hit their pants too loud, and we scared all of our we healthcare workers away. We scared them all away. off. Well, you thought they were like they would like that, but they got so scared they're all hiding under benches and in the sewers. Now you could spend weeks to try to lure doctor into your confidence try to leave treats out for them no. in, in, in a very passive They're very way. smart a, a tongue depressor for them to chew on so their teeth don't get too long but zoc doc is what you need to get these doctors to feel comfortable enough to treat you it's a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online you search through thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists you can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance or located near you and treat almost any condition you're searching for i very recently used zoc doc uh, actually for a couple different things because finding a doctor in D.C., while not as difficult as the comical situation that we just outlined, is pretty close. You do. I did have to go into a sewer at one time and hang out with the D.C. Turtles. Yeah. Um, Mitch, Mitch McConnell much? <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, audience. Don't laugh at that. Go to ZocDoc.com slash my brother and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash my brother. ZocDoc.com slash my brother. ZocDoc, maybe the perfect socks do exist. Okay, and we also have some announcements. Uh, first of all, very exciting. The Adventure Zone Suffering Game graphic novel cover has been revealed. So good. You can check it out and pre-order the book at theadventurezonecomic.com. This one's going to whip your whole ass apart. It's a really apart. good one. Okay. It's going to what, Griffin? It's going to whip your whole ass apart. Okay. My, kids, my kids are backstage. I don't okay. like them. You said it. Okay. okay. Also, the Plato Rave poster designed by Danielle Myjo Birch is available now. It's there. It's beautiful. It's where? You can't just say there. Oh, it's at macroymerch.com. Okay. Oh, okay. But it's beautiful. Uh, and you should check out the rest of Danielle's art at my Joe Birch underscore art on Instagram. And also, we've got the glow in the dark. I found more questions in Kettler, West Virginia bin, the Amnesty Lodge candle. Uh, so good. It smells it's so, so good. great. Yeah. Candle Night's wrapping paper is back, uh, designed by Justin Gray, aka at Burn to Build on Instagram. And 10% of all merch proceeds this month go to Reproductive Freedom for All, which fights for access to abortion care, birth control, paid parental leave, and protections from pregnancy discrimination. Get all of that and more at McRoyMerch.com. See ya. Hi, I'm Bikram Chatterjee, the CEO of Maximum Fun, and I'm here with my fellow worker owner, Marissa Flaxbart, producer. This week for Co-Optober, we'll be highlighting other co-ops who work in the arts. The past few years have been challenging for all kinds of creative industries. We at Max Fun believe that co-ops are better suited to meet these challenges. And there are a lot of other companies who feel the same way. So all this week on our social media and website, we'll be sharing interviews with some of our fellow co-ops. And head to our YouTube channel Friday, October 20th, where I'll be talking with worker owners from Defector and Stocksy about their co-ops and why the model works for them. And next week is Volunteer Week. Learn how you can participate in that and get details on exclusive merch, our live streams, and other Co-Optober happenings at MaximumFun.org slash Co-Optober. That's C-O-O-P-T-O-B-E-R. Oh! 
All right, class. Tomorrow's exam will cover the science of cosmic rays, the morals of art forgery, and whether or not fish can drown. Any questions? Yes, you in the back. Oh, uh, what is this? It's the podcast Let's Learn Everything, where we learn about science and a bit of everything else. My name's Tom. I study cognitive and computer science, but I'll also be your teacher for intermediate emojis. My name's Caroline, and I did my master's in biodiversity conservation, and I'll be teaching you intro to things the British Museum stole. My name's Ella. I did a PhD in stem cell biology, so obviously I'll be teaching you the history of fan fiction. Class meets every other Thursday on Maximum Fun. So do I still get credit for this? (laughs) (laughs) No. No. (laughs) Obviously not. No. It's a podcast. (laughs) Hey, how's it going, buddies? My name's Richard Stink. I'm coming expert about fragrance. <laughs> this is amazing! Uh, I'm so excited to be here. I had lucky for you, actually, because I was just in town for fragrance convention here across the street. What's that called? Yeah, what's it called? Fra- Stink Fest. I put it on every year. Was you it? plant, you put it on. It used to be about my webcomic, and now it's just regular stink stuff. <laughs> It's kind of evolved and grown. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's pretty prying and gauche, but I'm going to ask, what's the attendance like? Well, there's at least 80 every year, no problem. Okay. All the right. The problem is you get too many people who are big in the fragrance yeah. in one room. I'd say more than Sets four. sprinklers off. It gets a health hazard sprinkler go wild. But no, this is cool. I love it. I went over a little bit to look at the, do you still say nerds? Yeah. 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 This is okay. Yeah, sure. I looked at the fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Now, Richard, no, when you say fucking, it makes it so much worse, you man. You said they said it was. No, but not fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you guys, th- th- you think that we are so different. Like, I'm this cool sexual jock. And it's, yeah. you're not wrong. At no, all. literally no one said that. You did, did you not s- need to uh, confirm. Did you see or- any cool cosplay while you were there? What's this? Cool co- So cosplay, uh, people wear costumes. Yeah. Every day. Yes? We all wear a costume. Whoa, Richard. Wait. Explain that. Speak yeah, on wait, that, hold Richard. on. Yeah. That hey, Richard, seemed- don't just say that. Speak on that, please. It seemed deep for a moment. Yeah. Well, it's like fragrance is like a costume of the nose, right? Wow, yeah. Yeah. So sure. your cosplaying is like for most fragrance, your cosplaying is like a big tree with soap on it. Mm. <laughs> and Richard, would you say doing a fake accent is like cosplay for the ears? I I don't know, I've never been a big accent guy. So listen, you guys there's some more overlap for us than you probably even ever think about. Okay. Overlap between us? Me the n- nerds. the nerds. The nerds and like People like me. Cool jock type. Normal cool people. jock types. Because there is a real good subset of like fragrance about your stuff. Like, there, do you guys like a Deadpool? So funny. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. He's Irreverent. A, What's I, not to love? He's like a wild man. This is his fragrance, Deadpool for men. Hey, you didn't have to say the second part. Yeah, but listen. I got... I. This got a lot of big fucking really nice notes. You're uh, cussing a lot tonight, Woody. Richard. Yeah, I got. How's your walk? How's your walk? I did my, how's your walk? I went and got permissions from the priest before. They call it uh, indulgences. So I got four cusses I can do whenever I want. I'm pretty I sure them. you've done more than four so far. That's all right. Uh, this is this is woody, musky, warm, sexual, like Deadpool, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's got, I got the reviews are in on this one. <laughs> it seriously does not smell how I imagined Deadpool with the smell. And I'm pleasantly surprised. Wait, this reviewer thought when they purchased it, this is going to smell like a sweaty dude in a costume. Yeah. Oh, thank God. It smells clean and the musk in it is soft and sweet. Tender almost. Thank you, Deadpool for men. Found this at Burlington on Clarence for $10. I mainly got it for the metal box. (laughs) 
<laughs> Why? What are you going to put in it? I don't know. We The fragrance itself <laughs> smells like that temporary hair color spray you find at the Walmart during Halloween mixed with a shitrous toilet spray. It does not sound like a big scent. Does not sound like a panty dropper, got to be honest. So we found this at Hot Topic, and they were kind enough to let us sample before purchase. My son is a big Deadpool fan, and he went with me to Hot Topic. Oh, wait. Are you reading reviews now? Someone who identifies as a Deadpool fan went okay. along the Hot Topic. I thought it or not. you, Richard, were giving testimony. No, these are actual reviews that people wrote. Okay, fantastic. My, it is orange blossom, very faint, then gone. It doesn't even smell masculine at all. It there certainly doesn't smell anything like you think a Deadpool would smell like. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, just so you know, the Deadpool fragrance, big, sexual, not like Deadpool really at all. Not smelling like Deadpool. Yeah. Next up, we got uh, the web guy. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-Man turn off the stink. <laughs> This one's called. You can't <laughs> this is a big. Fragrance. You like that. You like that joke a I lot. I thought it was Richard. pretty yeah. good because it smelled like. It. I bought this for. <laughs> here's another. <laughs> here's a. <laughs> here's a review for Spider Man. I bought this for my son, ages five and one. <laughs> wow. It's perfect scent for them. It's a perfect scent for your one-year-old baby. Well, the baby, okay, I can't no, 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 let's unpack that because the perfect scent of a one-year-old baby is like old formula and piss. Yeah, that's what they hey, all. Hey, you smell just hit like. the top two notes. <laughs> yeah, of Otis Spider-Man. It's a perfect scent for them. It's boyish enough without smelling manly. This My, is like Spider-Man himself. This is such a relief. No one wants a baby that smells so manly. <laughs> you, get, you get all intimidated. Hey, that baby just came in here. It's making me feel like a real cut. That, ba- that baby said I, baby said I couldn't find the carburetor with a map. I didn't like the baby. <laughs> it's perfect for that my wife. That baby's wa- over there flirting with my wife, and I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about it. Um, <laughs> there is a one three out of five star verified smell. It's not great. Not, not what the, other factors <laughs> are you reviewing this product Well, for? we know people love a metal box. Smell, it's a not great. Not the nice scent for kids. My kids are using it, but I don't so much like the smell. <laughs> I've tough. lost control of my household, yes. Bottle, too big. Kids won't stop spraying. This is the smell. Um, Do you all know about this guy? Uh, ba- yeah, ba- sure, yeah. of course. Get, oh, he, boy. He's getting vengeance. This looks like a vape more than anything. This is from the House of Salas, right? And they, this is from, this is not a review of Batman Vengeance, the smell. This is their description of it. The Batman X House of Salas theatrical limited edition vengeance fragrance was created to capture the crisp oud olfactory sensorial experience of the Batman's vendetta for Gotham's justice. Wait. Wait, 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 what? Wait. Batman's vendetta for Gotham's justice? It smelled and like this. It smelled like this thing you said. When we put this scent together, we said, make sure that it smells like Batman's vendetta for <laughs> Gotham justice. Yes, and that's what it smells like with a fresh, oud, big, sexual panty dropper just like Batman himself. Gross. Yeah, I don't write the descriptions, man. I'm just telling you how it smells. It says that? Well, it implies. There's a long tradition, though, of this Batman in fragrance. This is not new. Like, um, the, there's one that was made a while ago by Batman Begins. You know about this guy? Oh, wow. That looks right. The review on this one is way too mature for my five-year-old to pull off. That's <laughs> what it says here. <laughs> hey, folks, everybody, let your, there's an ad for it, too. I want to share so this with big. you. so big. It's wow. so big. It's the size of a Nintendo 4. That can't. Is looking for the expiration. Yeah, man. Get it out. There's, uh, Iron Man. You know about him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Big, sexual, lots of great notes. 
Uh, in this one, the reviews are in too. This one says here, some ended up on my hand, and as soon as I got home, my dogs came over and started sniffing my hand. One of them actually coughed a few times, and they both ran away from me. <laughs> this is the review for Iron Man fragrance. The dogs smell this not so nice for them. <laughs> they don't like it. Dog licked the butthole, but they don't like this, it seems. Doesn't seem very good. Is it, on here is cinnamon, fresh, citrus, green, spicy, powdery. Barbamol. Dogs love all that shit, yeah. man. I don't Sandalwood, get it. Sandalwood, cedar, what's wrong with you picky dogs? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah, Richard. We all like the minions. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah, we do. This one is, um, there's the reviews are in on this mi minions fragrance. The bottle is simple and stylish. Well, now. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look like any bottles I've got lying around the house. It's so swallowable. That's my problem with it. I want to find I, an orifice that fits him. Look at it. Yeah, he's ready. Here's Okay, okay. Can I say? We're going to breeze past that one, Rich. I... Banana. I... Mm. That's good. You That's know fucking about funny, man. I've never once in my entire life looked at a minion on screen and print anything and thought... I bet that smells great. I bet that's a good smell. I want to smell like that little ding dong. You probably wouldn't like our next reviewer who said, smelled this on my man yesterday and I was obsessed. Smell this on my man? Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. You are a minions. <laughs> you know you drive me absolutely wild with that. Hey, next time wear minions and nothing else. We have the, we have the kids tonight. Why would you wear minions? You know what it does to me. The dogs are screaming at the top of their lungs. My panties drop so hard they smash through the floor. <laughs> Is it minions? Banana. Oh, Who shit. lives in the pineapple under the sea? Our next fragrance. Superhero. You guys like this? It doesn't all have to be a hero. You all like SpongeBob SquarePants? Yeah, he's cool. He's an anime. Um, yeah. <laughs> Upon the first spray, the fragrance opens with a zesty and refreshing combination of citrus notes reminiscent of the salty sea breeze from SpongeBob's underwater world. Let me say Wait. this. Of all the characters we've seen so far, if you were to tell me which one of these has a distinct smell, I would say our friend SpongeBob who lives in the sea. The lemon and But I've never smelled the ocean air and thought, ah, uh, citrus. I've never smelled a sponge and gone good. As the hard nuts unfold, a delightful blend of pineapple and marshmallow emerges, paying homage to the iconic crusty crab pineapple under the sea. The sweetness is balanced by hits of oceanic florals, which harmoniously represent the unique characters and friendships that define the show. This is not the company that made this, right? This is somebody who spray it and be like, this is fucking exactly like SpongeBob. <laughs> it's exactly like Every SpongeBob. part of this is like watching the cartoon. Did you say the Krusty Krab pineapple under the sea? That's what it says here. It draws parallels to the cherish, uh, the dry down of fragrance unveils a warm and comforting base of sandalwood, drawing parallels to the cherished moments of SpongeBob's enduring optimism and his unwavering friendship with Patrick. It's the smell of cedarwood. Yeah. You know what that sandalwood reminds me of? SpongeBob's unending <laughs> a positivity and, a, and also friendship. I got just one more quick. You guys also like a Star Wars. Hell yeah. Yeah, I know about this. That's Star Wars, this fragrance. You smell exactly like it. There's only one problem for this. There's only one review for this uh, that I look up and he says this. I like this and I think it's similar to Wile E. Coyote by Looney Tunes. Can I say? So I uh, had to go... I had to go to the source, right? Now, that's a stylish-ass bottle. I would definitely spray that on me, no questions asked. Why did they put a stormtrooper on there? Yeah. Uh, Why did they decide that that was what they are going to lead with? Once again, I have to assume some of the smelliest... Of all like, Star Wars, they probably smell fine. Of all the Star Wars, yeah. they probably smell fine. Yeah. You think that the stormtrooper... Genetically engineered clone troopers, I would genetically engineer the stink out of them. There's Good. no way they stink. Yeah. You want to put Jabba on there, you fucking pervert? Where though? Smell like Darth Vader? Yes. That's all right. I'd rather smell like Darth Vader. I bet he smells fantastic. Yeah. Now listen. Probably see, smells like um, smoke. This is about Wile E. Coyote. See, their coriander and tonka beans are quite easy to find. The rest of the notes <laughs> could also be part of the mix, but vanilla is the least prominent one, in my opinion. I didn't scent any vanilla at all. And then the last reviewer on this one, 
And I guess this applied to Star Wars too, because it's exactly like a Wiley Coyote by Looney Tunes. The last review says this. I'm, <laughs> I'm saving it for my baby son when he's old enough to know what scent is. <laughs> He is only six months old. <laughs> is that from? Wait, I'll wait till he's one. It's from, and the reviewer's name was Michael Stink. Wait a minute. Yeah, my. Ba- anyway, they're saving it for their baby. That's all for me. Thank you, everybody. Thank Good you, night. Richard. Wowzers. And then he's off. <laughs> He's off to the next town All right. to save another life. So we're going to take some questions from the audience. We will handle it from there. You okay, Juice? You miss Richard again, my man. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, Tommy Troubles. Uh, you know me. It happens. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm uh, Michael from Section A. That's probably irrelevant. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- oh, that Michael. Hey, Michael. I've heard a lot of good things. Yeah, a lot so of good Mike, buzz going around about Michael from Section A. Been working on that. So Hello. at the end of this month, there's a theater in Seattle. I was on a reality TV show when I was a child. Yeah. Yeah, which one? Kid Nation. Yeah. Yeah, we got this question backstage. I was like, huh, that's interesting. I Googled your name, and then I was like, this is going to make it on the, on the show. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so a theater is uh, going to stream like a truncated version of the show. That's amazing. <laughs> and surprising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Uh, they reached out to me on LinkedIn. Okay. Do you have Kid Nation, sorry, Survivor on your LinkedIn uh, page? Some of the film crew was from Survivor. Uh, I do, because... Yeah, why not? Trying to entice some attention. Fuck yeah, <laughs> Hey, bro. that's what LinkedIn is for. Yeah. You don't go on LinkedIn to blend I don't in. care what job someone's hiring for. If they see on the CV, oh, also, I was on Kid Nation, that's going to get some points. Wow, yeah, that's the graphic, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the question is, I suppose, well, I said, do I go? I feel like the answer to that is pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In what capacity do I go? In what capacity? Are you asking if you, like, demand that there's a special seat on the stage for you that you can watch the audience's reactions to all of your great Kid Nation moments? I'll put it this way. They basically asked if I would be there, and when I said, yeah, I would go, they said, how do you want to show up? Uh-oh. Now, okay, wait, wait Michael, yes. Michael, Michael. Did they ask, would you please come to it, or did they ask, are you going to be there? Are they worried you're going to be there going... That's not how it happened. Did you, were you a sort of Johnny Fairplay, vil, like a heel of Kid Nation? Yeah, how was your edit, would you say? Extremely uh, milk toast. Milk toast, okay. <laughs> so uh, you weren't one of, and it probably is disappointing to be on Kid Nation and have it reduced to this anytime people talk about it, but w- you weren't the poisoner or poison E of Kid Nation, correct? This, Fantastic, that's great. <laughs> This, this bit would have got really uncomfortable super duper fast if the qu- answer was yes to either of those. Uh, do you like, do you have good vibes when you think about that experience? Or how's Absolutely. your like headspace with it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just go. Admit, it's your whole person this is a small part of it, but you know, there'll be a thrill for everybody and probably a thrill for you too. I think you'll be having a hoot. Now, can you bust through the screen like the Hulk? Because that That's would be huge. fucking Purple Rose of Cairo, just like, and he's here to the, you know what I mean? Like, drop that on him, maybe, Michael? I'm less concerned about what I do after my entrance. Um, uh, it's that if there was a good entrance. You're going to be carried in on a litter by several small children? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, this is adult nation now. Look at this large child I Michael have, has become. I have ascended. Um, God, I mean... We if, serve at the pleasure of this giant child. If I, not a joke, if I lived in this city, I would go to this. And I would, I personally would want a Q&A with as many members of people involved with Kid Nation as I possibly could. I'm someone with a deep, deep, deep fascination with reality television programming. And so that would be a great service you would provide to specifically people like myself. When is this thing? Because if it's tomorrow, I might be able to actually make it. <laughs> End of the month. End of ah, the month. Shit. We'll be back. No, no. 
Um, so I would say share share as much with. Yeah, what theater? Michael, blast it out. The Beacon Theater. The Beacon, Beacon theater. theater. Be there. Michael's going to be doing paid signings. Did you have to do an... In- Let Michael sign your kids. <laughs> Is, did you have to sign a, a, an NDA when you participated in Kid Nation? I'm sure it's lapsed by now. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, it has to have been. And also, how cool would it be to be sued by Kid Nation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sovereign state of Kid Nation. Um, does that help? Tremendous. It's such an honor awesome. to meet you. Thank you for your, your bravery. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Indrid, he, they. Hey. Hello. Um, so I really like fish nice. yeah. in like a food way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a romantic way. N- Not like a, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, I heard people mid woo go- get disappointed. Like, woo. I mean, if there's any fish in the crowd, um, yeah, Anyways. it's possible. It's possible. Are you like- the Harbor seal that tackled the, <laughs> I signed an NDA. I can't okay, talk about I that. Okay. I got you. It's possible to like fish in two ways, by the yeah, way. Yeah, sure. I keep fish and I eat fish, not the same yeah, one. Right, sure. There is not a like, you're being a real bully. Get over here. So what? Okay, so you like fish? Good? I, I really like eating fish. It's okay. like one of my favorite types of food. I'm going to an aquarium tomorrow. Yeah. Right? The and Seattle I, Aquarium? Yeah, that Gorgeous. one specifically. Yeah, it's a great one. I have one. a history of freaking people out with the way that I like to eat fish, the sort of like... Just like reach into the tank and grab them? Yeah, sure. Do you do like totally. a Heathcliff, like, oh, and then just bones come out? How do you eat fish, he asks. <laughs> Warily. Not like that. I mean... You introduced the yeah, idea yeah, of eating it's, it's it weird. your problem now. You have to fix it. Indrid, we didn't assume you Please, ate it weird. Please, go ahead. Um, so it's specifically my enthusiasm when it yeah. comes to eating fish. Okay. Uh, way back in the day, I used to visit aquariums a lot in like Oklahoma and everything. And every time I went to an aquarium, I would go, I would admire the beautiful, beautiful sea life. Yeah. Just admire oceans and everything. Yeah. Immediately after, I would start demanding seafood. Yeah. Okay. Now listen. Yeah, Indrid. This is something that is maybe unknown trivia about us. We have been to every aquarium in this nation of ours because when we travel with our kids, that's like the go-to thing for us is that pretty much any kid will go look at some fish for a couple hours. And so I feel like I can say pretty definitively that across the street from every major aquarium in the country is a seafood restaurant. With 100%. 100% of the time. There is There's always one. There is where you can eat fish for fun. When you think about fish, at least ocean fish, right? They're literally brining themselves for you. Amazing. Very, very convenient. <laughs> right? They're ready for the cooking. This is true. This and is listen, true. fish get old. <laughs> no. I'm not suggesting you, you would never eat an aquarium fish. You I, wouldn't steal the car. <laughs> <laughs> listen. But... There is something deep in our DNA, in our hind brain, that when we see a bunch of fish at an aquarium, you start to think like, damn, it would be good. Can I just say, this is why somewhere I- there is a sliding scale between going to a seafood restaurant and seeing an aquarium full of lobsters and inherently knowing what that deal is. <laughs> Yeah. And then on the other side of that spectrum is going to an aquarium and knowing you're not allowed to eat any of those. Yeah. And somewhere in between there is a tipping point where you think, well, those are the fish for eating. Yeah. The, right? It tips right over. This is why I had to stop going to dinosaur bone museums. It got too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> what do they taste like? I barely even stopped to chew. (laughs) I will say that sometimes when you're at an aquarium, you see a big prehistoric fucking looking fish (laughs) that has teeth that look like human teeth, but bigger than my teeth. I see that. I say, I do not want to eat fish today because some fish look like that. 
Like a real, honest to God, Mr. Limpet situation. Hey, while you're in the neighborhood, there's a wild 4D ride we went on yesterday over there. Wings over Washington. Y'all done that? Y'all got to check it's, that it's shit out. It's pretty out there. It's pretty good. Um, that was like both help and like a bonus tip. Yes. <laughs> we kicked ass. Hey, guys, great fucking Yeah, job. nice. Nice job, guys. Good. Thank you. Is that good? <laughs> we know it's good. We did it. We, we did it. it. We already did it. Yeah, we did it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Enjoy you. your fish. Um, hello. Hi. My Hi. name's Abby. Hi, Hi Abby. Abby. So I just got back from a Mediterranean cruise like two weeks ago. Cool. And while I was there, I got this fancy painting from Nice, France. Okay. But I'm a little afraid if I like hang it up in my apartment and people ask about it, it's going to come off really pretentious like, I was summering in France. Yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. I, okay. Yeah. First of all, what's the painting of? It's a cat in a garden. Oh. That's cool. cool. Love that. Yeah. Can I say... To flip it around. If I went over to someone's house and I worked up the courage to ask about a painting on yes. the wall and the response was, good eye. That's I French. bought that oh. in France. I'd be like, you've detected yes. the Pari Perhaps you've uh, detected a certain Parisian flair. <laughs> Imagine my delight at meeting the, another the flip connoisseur. Side is, flip side of that is you go up to someone's art and be like, mm, that's cool. And then they say, tricked you. That's a Scarface poster from Target. <laughs> Read the plaque next to it. You lose. I believe you'll find that's a Scarface poster. Right next to it. Yeah, it, it says right there. It does a Scarface poster, parentheses, taped to wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this, be proud of your Parisian art. Um, do, you have, do you have other stuff from France around? Uh, I mean, I travel a lot, so I have a lot of stuff, especially from Japan and stuff like that's that. That's fucking cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's it would be weird if you didn't have something from France, don't you think? A little bit, if people yeah. came in and you if didn't I went have... there, and I was like, it's all overrated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Abby, <laughs> go even further. Remove everything else from your living room <laughs> except the painting. And when someone comes in, they're like, what's the deal with the painting? Like, oh, good eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's from France. It's from France. Yeah, I noticed you scrolled It's from France and Sharpie on the wall next to it. Don't you rent? <laughs> yeah, I rent. Why? Yeah, but I don't rent that painting. I bought I it bought in, it France. in France. France. I'm an amateur docent. It's cool. <laughs> Smuggled that baby over. <laughs> in a box. Labeled you painting. Need to, you need to get more things from France. That's the problem. If you were the person that has all kinds of stuff from France, the painting wouldn't even make a blip. But right now, it's very, like, it's it's ostentatiously French, and it's standing out to you. You just need some more French stuff to balance it out. Easy. How much French stuff before it's like, eight? oh, man, every oh, holiday. He got it. He got it. Yeah, eight. eight. Eight things from France. <laughs> eight, things, every eight different things from France. Welcome to my very niche escape room. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go through my home and find the eight things from France. <laughs> and I see you eyeballing the painting. Good eye. Good eye. Good, good eye. Shit. A certain Parisian flair. <laughs> Does that help? Sure. I guess I have to go back to France. Yep. Yeah. yeah. More French more stuff. Um, does that help? Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I'm Sydney. Uh, hi, she, Sydney. her. Hello. Hello. I have a cat question. Okay. Sure you do. So my family has a very famous cat. My dad specifically made keyboard cat. Now, hold on. The I'm not verb, fibbing. The, no, no, I know, because I Googled your name when you sent this question, and the verb made <laughs> is wild. Is it made as in the way that, like, a promoter might say to their boxer, I made you, kid, not I created this cat. Well, if you pay for like eight thousand dollars of cat piano lessons, I say you okay. made it. Yeah. All right. You didn't think the the cat was really playing, did you, Griff? First the first the bull thing, and now this, huh? I'm, I'm my I'm my heart's breaking over here. <laughs> um, so you know keyboard cat? Yeah, technically we're. Are siblings. they cool in real life? <laughs> it's so a good cool. hang, right? This must be a, and I don't want to get morose but a sort of dread pirate robert situation <laughs> because if memory serves keyboard cat popped up in like 1998 and cats don't usually 
kick it for that. Well, when you're a no, famous cat. No, 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 Travis, shut the fuck up and let Griffin ask if Keyboard Cat is dead. <laughs> He's getting there, bud. Just let him get there. Well, I'm not kidding. He's been reincarnated twice. Okay. Okay. No, kidding again. The word choices. It's so just you, true. You have Keyboard Cat, the next, next generation. So yes. aged is this meme. Okay. The, the question is, though, when I meet people, I don't know when to tell them. Right away. <laughs> well, because... Hi, I'm Sydney. You know, Keyboard Cat died twice. <laughs> Can't keep him down. Hi, my name's Sydney, and I've watched Keyboard Cat die twice. <laughs> Seven more to go. <laughs> then I'll finally be able to be free. <laughs> His soul can go to heaven. <laughs> I think any amount of t- okay, I see your problem here because any I don't amount of any amount of, yeah, but any amount of time you aren't telling people that you have Keyboard Cat is the amount of time where they're going to be like, how in the fuck could you yeah, not tell me this that? Is like, exactly. Great. Because there's a wrong answer to this. Yes. And it's lower than I think a lot of people expected. Because if I was friends with someone and after a month of friendship, they were like, oh, and by the way, my dad made keyboard cat. I would be like, that sucks that I'm just now finding out about this. Yes. I, we have the same manager as Grumpy Cat. That's not, that's, that's the least surprising thing I've heard all day. <laughs> Is there a way you can set it up of like, yeah, it's really nice to meet you. I like to play this icebreaker game where we list off Yo. if our parents have ever escalated a cat yeah. to a level of fame one could barely conceive. I, yeah, I will tell you one good. good answer to this, and that is that you have a truly killer ace card to play when you do two truths and a lie. Yeah. That's this normally one, you how could it just comes be out. like, uh, my dad created keyboard cat and something else true, and my favorite color is green. And they're like, well, clearly it's the cat thing. You're like, no, jokes on you. I like blue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that's what I do. Um, but but yeah. you can't wait around. Can you for win a, bar for an icebreaker game to <laughs> casually come yeah. up in a human interaction? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's I mean you got to start going to church, Sydney. Now, Griffin does tell everybody that, that asks for his advice. That's always how he wraps up. Just saying. New Sunday school. A lot of icebreaker games are going to start flying. <laughs> if you need some answers, sometimes we all lose our way a little bit, and Griffin thinks you can find your path in. You know, the church again. when church. a cat dies, no. yeah. there's a grieving <laughs> process, and sometimes it's hard to find your way out. You know who can help with that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus was kind of the original meme when you think about Jesus it. Jesus was sort of... <laughs> The first keyboard cat. Does that help? Oh, immensely. Oh, Thank good. So I'm much. glad. Thank I'm you. so glad. Now My dad good. made that. Now that's good shit. Paul painted that one real quick. Uh, hey, y'all, thank you so much. This has been an absolute delight. You're such a fun city to be in. We love doing shows here. And people always say that when they do shows, but it, we really love it in Seattle. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you to the Wanda Theater for having us. It's so, so, so cool to be here, genuinely. Um, thank-, Th- thank you to uh, Paul and Rachel and Amanda for helping make the show possible. Thank you. And, thank you. And, our, and our daddy. And our daddy. Our daddy. And Christina, thank you. Thank you to Karma the Night Owl for the poster design that you can find uh, for sale outside. We signed a bunch of them. Maybe they're still out there. Maybe not. Thank you to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better with You. Our lives are better with this song. Thank you so much, Montaigne. And oh, it's time for a sound bath. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, we're going to give you all just a quick uh, cleansing sound bath. If everyone from here over could repeat after me, and then tra- I guess Travis me will in do the, the back. middle. I'll this take this in the back in section. The back. And then Justin okay. take that over. These just two are Justin's. Okay, Justin's kids. All right. Funny. My name's Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. This is me, my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips.
Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.